What's up guys, welcome back to Newswave. Well yesterday, Nintendo did have their indie showcase and there were certainly a bunch of unique titles there and one that was technically missing that a lot of people are hoping to see, but we'll go over everything that was shown off there today. Also, we are gonna be talking about Sony making more of a push even into like the, the PC space, now with a new feature for their upcoming release with Ghost Tsushima. And we'll be talking about a major victory for emulation as it looks like Apple is fully on board. So if you guys enjoy these videos, make sure you hit that like button, helps out a ton. And if new here to the Spawn Wave channel, make sure you subscribe down below. And of course, members for the channel do get Newswave early and ad free. If you would like to learn more about that, you can click the join button down below this video. And we're gonna start today with the big live service initiative that's been ongoing now for years, even though we see so many of them fail, sometimes even before they release. Well, now we have maybe a bit of a viewpoint from some of the developers behind these games, and we can see this is posted up. This is over on gamedeveloper.com, saying 70% of devs unsure of live service games sustainability. Now, this survey from the Game Developer Collective was of 600 developers. They were interviewed between February and March 2024. 39% of participants had mild worries over current live service business models. 31% were very concerned. And they were a combined 29% either had no fears or were unsure. And, you know, I have wondered this at times. We, of course, know that the, the ones making the decisions around these games, the direction they'll take the monetization models are the, obviously the suits people at the top who are sort of guiding the projects. But then you have the developers actually down there in the trenches making these games that I'm sure look around and go, I, this probably isn't going to work or be sustainable. And seemingly mo more times than not, they end up being correct in that case. But just think about it that way. It's like you're down there, you're working on these different games at like the, the coding level and you're looking around like this, it's not gonna work, but I mean, they signed the paycheck, so I'll just keep pushing along. It's that's that's rough, but that's kind of how it is right now with live service games. It's a coin flip if it will work out in the end. Also, we have Sea of Thieves releasing pretty soon here on the PlayStation 5, but ahead of that release, it looks like they wanted to announce a major milestone that is very impressive for this game. We can see this is over on their website. They say Sea of Thieves welcomes. 40 million players celebrating a phenomenal fleet of Xbox and PC pirates who've set sail since, since launch years ago. But yeah, 40 million players, that's across Xbox, Windows 10, and Steam. And now obviously launching on the PS5 here, what, in just a couple of weeks? This is through like 11 seasons and again, years and years of supports and updates and some pretty fun collaborations. But I mean, that's just very impressive. We just talked about live service games and how developers are unsure about them. Sea of Thieves, despite launching and, and being kind of, kind of bare bones, it felt like at the beginning, has continued to evolve over the years. And now is actually a pretty good game overall, especially if you're in the sort of, obviously the pirate, the it's kind of setting sail, making an adventure with a bunch of crew members, finding buried treasure. I mean, yeah, it, it is a fun game and certainly a very unique experience, but it took time to get there and soon they'll be released on the PlayStation 5, which just means this 40 million number is just gonna continue to grow. Oh, and here's a, an interesting bit of news. This coming from Variety, looks like we're gonna be getting a new Golden Axe show. We can see this posted up with their exclusive saying, a Golden Axe animated series has been greenlit at Comedy Central. That's okay, that, that's interesting. Now, Comedy Central has ordered 10 episodes here and there is some more information around the animation studios behind it, some of the creators and stuff. But for me, I was looking at this going, Golden Axe, that's, I'm trying to think of what exactly the lore would be and how they would, I, I guess, just make it a compelling journey through 10 episodes. But I, I mean, seeing Fallout, I was, I, I, I had an idea as like the lore and like the world, how they could build that out, but the, having different characters in a game where you essentially make your character at the beginning and set out on your own journey that you create as you go, that is a bit harder to navigate. Golden Axe though, let's just say they actually come out with a really good show. That could of course set the stage for what Sega is trying to do right now, which is revive a lot of these older intellectual properties. And we've seen with these different releases where it, it's praised in terms of its storytelling and the show itself, that it does springboard interest for some of their games, even if they're a bit older. So something to follow here certainly with 
Comedy Central backing Golden Axe. We'll see how it turns out. And guys, with some of the quick news out of the way, let's get into the bigger stuff. Let's start right away with Nintendo and their Indie World Showcase that took place yesterday. It did run for roughly 20 minutes and they had a number of titles to show off there. Many of them will say certainly unique games, but we'll go over line by line exactly what was shown here, starting from the top with Little Kitty Big City. This is coming out May 9th and... You know, I, as I'm watching this, I did think back to when Stray came out and I was, I don't know if I'm going to like a game like this where you're playing as a cat necessarily, but I enjoyed Stray and Little Kitty Big City. It just seems like it's going to be sort of an adventure game where, yes, you play as a cat in a big city, causing all kinds of mayhem, completing different quests and challenges. I, I'll, I'll check it out. It could, it could be interesting there. Then we have Yars Rising, WayForward and Atari teaming up for this one. It coming out in 2024 and Yars is a very storied franchise for Atari. So, all right, we'll see how this one, how this one goes. And we have Refined Self Personality Test Game. That's summer 2024. Sticky Business. You run a sticker business and okay. And uh, sure, it, again, unique games here in these Indie World showcases. I think it was kind of weird. And I didn't necessarily look into the store page. I am curious as to, there's a game and DLC. So they released the game, the base game, and then they have downloadable content that you can also buy, or there's a bundle with both. I, that seemed a bit off with kind of the indie world stuff where you don't typically see an indie game show up and then also have DLC, but hey, you get to run a sticker business. I guess technically there's no other game like that one. Then we have Anton Blast, which looks absolutely off the wall ridiculous, but November 12th, 2024, there is a demo out now for, for this one to check out. Then we have Valley Peaks, that's 2024. Lorelei and the Laser Eyes, May 16th. Europa, okay, so... Uh, this one popped up and I will say visually speaking, like the art style, I think looks awesome. It looks really good, especially on the switch. It just looks, it looks very clean. Now it's out in 2024. There is a demo out currently, so you can fire it up and, and see what you think there on your, on your TV or on the switch uh, t uh, screen. The OLED probably looks awesome with it. Then we have TMNT Splintered Fate. I actually went over this game back when I did a video kind of exploring Apple Arcade because it it was exclusive to the Apple Arcade until obviously this announcement here, but this I, I thought was a pretty fun game. And also, again, it was sort of in the realm of Apple Arcade. So the comparisons based on the other games there is competition wasn't through the roof or anything, but it, it's a, you can kind of compare it to like a Hades style game. I mean, yeah, it's roguelike, but there was a lot of stuff to unlock in it. It was a lot of fun to go through and they had a bunch of different, enemies for bosses you wouldn't necessarily expect like they really dove into the lore for the ninja turtles and it had full online co-op up to four people total can make these runs and i had a lot of fun with it so this is one i'm going to be keeping an eye on here for the switch it's coming out july 2024 they did mention it was a console exclusive so i guess it will or it will eventually go to other platforms but this is one i would absolutely keep my eye on especially if you kind of like those roguelike style games it's that with tmnt then we have cat quest 3 that's august 8th and the demo is out now i played the original cat quest and i actually liked it but I fell off after that. I, I guess they work for them and they sell. So they're on to the third one here. Then there's Stitch. This is a game about embroidery. It is out now. Then we kick things off with a sizzle reel. We have what's bzzzt, B-Z-Z-Z-T, summer 2024. Shim, that's July 18th. Animal Well, May 9th. Duck Detective, May 23rd. And Another Crab's Treasure. That's out pretty soon, April 25th. And that's one that I am going to try out. As I mentioned before, it is going into Game Pass on Xbox, so I'll probably play it there. But it being a Souls-like crab game, I, again, unique titles all the way around here. But then the big closeout title was not Hollow Knight Silk Song. Again, a lot of people were hoping for that one. It was Steam World Heist 2. And if you played Steam World Heist, kind of that turn-based strategy style game, it looks like that just way more in depth seemingly for some of the stuff they showed, especially with the character customization. This one coming out August 8th. And overall, we had a total of 17 different games that were shown here. And for the most part, looking around, they're all coming out this year. In fact, more than half of them are out in what the next two months or so. It, I think all things considered, when I go into these indie showcases, I'm not expecting massive first party reveals, even third party reveals. 
nothing like that. I go in expecting to see some very unique and at times out there ideas that might not necessarily be for me, but if I can get a couple of games here that I'm at least interested in or maybe excited to check out and you have shadow drops, some demos, I'd say it's a, it's a pretty good show. And in fact, all of that was here. So in the world of indie showcases, I was okay with this one. And I thought it might, may have been considered one of the better ones Nintendo's done in the last two years or so. But of course, that had to be the poll question, which I put out there and we'll go over what my grade was for it after we see what everyone else thought. Next up, let's talk about a massive win for emulation as we've been covering the situation that's been unfolding with Apple, the App Store and emulators just starting to make the jump. But not necessarily legitimate ones. Typically these would be emulators that were essentially ripping off already established emulation and then just dropping it on the app store with ads, user tracking, that sort of thing. And Apple has, to their credit, actually pulled these down, not because they're emulators and you can play games on them, but because they are just ripoffs of other people's work. But now we have a legitimate emulator being approved and available now on the App Store, which we can see here, that is Delta Game Emulator, all-in-one GBA for iOS successor. Now, we had talked about uh, GBA for iOS, how <laughs> it got ripped off, there was an emulator dropped on the App Store, and that was the one that Apple pulled down. However, Delta, as we can see with the description, builds upon the strengths of its predecessor, GBA for iOS, while expanding to include support for more game systems such as Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Nintendo 64, and DS. There is actually a, a wide number of different uh, supported features here, including controller support, which you can use your Switch Pro controller, your Joy-Cons, PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Xbox Series. They have uh, keyboard support here. Uh, I mean, this is, it's cool because people, of course, would say, I don't want to use a touch screen. I mean, you just sync up any of these different controllers here, and it will, of course, cover Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, so people naturally are posting up all kinds of images of them just playing these different Pokemon games across all these generations on their iPhone. Now you can also do AirPlay. So if you have a TV that supports it, you can send the signal there. And people were tagging me saying that they're the, the latency for playing off of maybe even a controller to the iPhone or the iPad, then to the TV was actually not bad. They also mention cheat support for Game Genie, Pro Action Replay, Game Shark, and more. And it does have gyroscope support. They say specifically here, WarioWare Twisted only, uh, and then also microphone support for the DS. And the way this is work, this will work is you just load up files from your own like device. Before it was, we were unclear as to how that was going to function if you had to download a game through the emulator. Not the case, as we've seen with already uh, already approved emulation on the App Store. You can just get access to your files and load your games up and. That seems to be the case here as well. Now, to me at this point, the floodgates have opened for, we'll say legitimate emulators, and I'm sure they've kind of opened as well for non-legitimate emulators. They'll try to rip off more and more of them. So keep that in mind. Uh, just make sure it's from the, the actual source, the author of long running emulators before you go and download or pay for any of them. Uh, but there of course had been mentioned that PPSSPP, the uh, PSP emulator might make the jump. Uh, we're still not hundred percent sure on that one, but I mean, the, the person who created it did say they would keep an eye on this. And if it seems like it's good to go, like to get through the approval process, they would move it over. So that's something I would expect actually to make the jump. And when we eventually see GameCube come over and the Wii, that that it's it's just good news all the way around for emulation and of course iPhone iPad users who don't want to have to worry about jailbreaking their device or side loading content because that's really how you were doing it before all of this through official means and obviously the authors creators behind these different emulators that are being approved now have a access to a ton of new people who sure maybe they were using emulators on a PC or on a MacBook or an Android device before going to iPhone but the fact that what 235 million iPhones sold last year alone and every week hundreds of millions of users log onto the App Store yeah, there's a wide ranging audience that they now have access to and can really show off their 
emulator in that way. So just great news here for emulation all the way around. Seems to be Apple maybe opening things up a bit more with a lot of the regulatory scrutiny coming down on them. But hey, whatever it takes to get it done because this is just good news, obviously, for people with iPhones and iPads and would like more official ways to, well, be able to play all these retro games on your devices. And in our last bit of news, let's talk about a new feature that Sony is adding to the PC version of Ghost Tsushima. And this is something I think they'll be going back and retroactively adding to all their other releases as it does seem to tie in their PC releases with their PlayStation ecosystem. We can see this posted up over on PlayStation blog, where they say Ghost, uh, Ghost of Tsushima's director's cut on PC contains the full game, the Iki Island expansion, and the cooperative online multiplayer Legends mode. Thanks to cross-play support, Legends players on Windows PCs can team up with players on both PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 consoles and use in-game voice chat to communicate. So full crossplay there, which is awesome. And to go a bit further, Ghost of Tsushima Director's Cut is the first PlayStation title on PC that uses a new PlayStation overlay, which includes your friends list, trophies, settings, and your profile. This feature is available on Windows PCs and will be accessible from the in-game menu or for keyboard players by pressing Shift plus F1 shortcut on your keyboard. Now the trophy support was detailed a bit further and it's essentially the trophies you already have earned on the, the PlayStation version of the game. So you're not going in and just earning new trophies to go along with that or anything as in, oh, your Steam account stuff is split off from your PlayStation account. It's just all brought together. You do have to sign into your PlayStation account, which obviously that's what Sony really wants at the end of the day is just find more active users, more customers that they can sell these games to, but then also sort of bring you into that ecosystem that I think will eventually expand as they to moving more and more games over into their own PC launcher. And I think that is sort of their end game at this time. There's just too many variables sort of left up in the air just to rely on Steam. As we saw at one point, Microsoft even considering buying Valve outright and Steam. So who knows what the future holds for that platform. And that's one of the reasons I think Sony is working in this direction, but very interesting stuff here, especially if you're someone who maybe wants to earn trophies on the PC side of things for these games, running at higher, uh, res or higher resolutions, higher frame rates, taking advantage of ultra wide screens. But there's a lot of stuff you can do, a lot of cool stuff you can do, visually speaking. With, with these different games on PC, but technically you're still earning trophies for maybe a PlayStation profile you've had for a decade plus. So uh, definitely interesting stuff there and something to keep an eye on from Sony as we go forward with this new overlay that will be added, I think, to the older games, but also might build into something a bit bigger. And before we go to the comments of the day, we're gonna take a look at the poll that I posted up yesterday, where I ask, give the Indie World Showcase a grade. I oh, yeah, see right in the middle, 45%. Then we have F at 21%. Look, I guess if you go into this and come out the other side and you think, okay, nothing there was, was interesting to me, yeah, you probably give it an F, I, I get it. Then basically C or D and B were tied and then A at the top with 4%. I'm, I'm like between C and B because I feel like there was at least some decent stuff at that showcase and it was genu genuinely interesting, different, unique ideas being presented there. And that's something I do look for in these different showcases. If you find some weird and out there ideas that let's face it, a larger publisher and company will eventually rip off and try to build on. There was definitely some out there ideas that were showcased here, but seeing things like the, the Ninja Turtles game come off of Apple Arcade exclusivity, which is a big deal. And even SteamWorld Heist 2 at the end to cap things off. I know Hollow Knight Silk Song was absent, but as I mentioned, I think that's at this point been upgraded, we'll say, to being a more impactful reveal at a Nintendo Direct or an Xbox show or uh, or at Summer Game Fest or knows with Sony. I just think that will be something that will be at one of the larger presentations here, probably about a month and a half or, or so. But really looking at this, I, I do think it was okay and I'd be somewhere between a B or a C if I really had to pick, I'd probably give it a, a solid B. And we'll finish up with the comment of the day as you're seeing here. This is from a brand new says, you mentioned the PS6, but gamers over here playing on a PS7. So, you know, I, I did think about this a little bit because the PlayStation 6, we believe coming in 2028. So that means we would be in an eight year cycle now. 
tells me that if we consider that same like lifespan for the PS6, okay, 2036, where do we think we'll be with game consoles, with technology? Will it still just be about graphics or will we discover or something will be, there'll be a breakthrough or something to be created that we lean towards more because visuals will eventually plateau if they haven't already kind of started to do that now. So I think diminishing returns setting in, these companies will pivot to something a bit different. Might be convenience as the hybrid model with Nintendo has clearly worked, but who knows? That's the hard part is I don't really know what things will look like in 2036. So it's hard to say if just brute force power when it comes to playing these games is what will even be the target. Uh, if, I mean, at this point, what, 14 years from now, maybe? So we'll, we'll see. Keep that in mind, though, because I do think things might come a bit more clear when we do get to 2028 and see what the PlayStation 6 could offer, or maybe a bit earlier than that, what Microsoft could offer with their next-gen device. And ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna do it here for Newswave. If you enjoyed this video, guys, hit that like button. If not, hit the dislike. Leave comments down below about everything we talked about here today, whether there's Nintendo's Indie World Showcase, what'd you think about the different games that were shown off there? And then also what about Apple seemingly being fine now, approving these different emulators and you can play all these different Pokemon games, Nintendo 64 titles, Super Nintendo games right there on your iPhone and your iPad. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.